other than your family. All that matters that week is preparation for this game. Nice job, fellas! Hey, nice job, kid. Welcome to Varsity. And we gotta outwork them! We gotta out physical them! Every single snap! Go, baby! I love the simplicity of it. There's no doubt that in sumo that there's the stereotype of these are just big fat guys in a diaper. <laughs> Underneath that additional fat is extremely toned, extremely well-conditioned muscle frame. It's fourth and one every time you jump into the circle. It's just a straight battle. That's what sumo is all about. Those guys are, they're not anybody that is excluded from some of the greatest athletes in the world. Various legends trace sumo back to up to 2,000 years in Japanese history. There's stories of Japanese gods fighting a sumo match, stories that tell of how sumo was a competition, let's say, between two villages. Instead of the samurai with the sword, this one match, this five, 10 seconds was gonna decide who won this war. And then over time, it developed into martial training, and it also became an exclusive form of entertainment for the royal court. And then the last few centuries, it's become available for popular consumption. You see your whole foot, your heel attached to, so when you're going forward, you're pushing like this, instead of pushing like this. I worked in Japan back in the uh, beginning of the 90s. I started a sumo club just for fun. We practiced a few times a week, and pretty soon I started producing tournaments. And in 2001, I produced the first US Sumo Open. We had uh, about 600 fans in attendance and 23 competitors. For many, many years, Americans had a hard time getting any medals at all among a very strong field of foreigners. In both professional sumo in Japan, as well as international competition, there's a few countries that are very strong. Japan is the origin of the sport, and so Japanese are doing very well in pro sumo. The other real powerhouse is Mongolia. Mongolians have won about 70% of all the gold medals in the last eight years since they started competing here. Outside of Japan, this is uh, the biggest annual international sumo competition every year. The top contenders in the heavyweight division this year will obviously be Byamba, who was first for many, many years, the past eight years. Roy Sims was third. And he's a contender again. And uh, the Egyptian guys. Here, Mongolian, Egyptian, Japanese, American, all country play here because this is big competition. My name is Rami Gazzar. I am from Egypt. I play in an Egyptian sumo team and they play um, Poland Open. I have a gold medal and Hungary this year. I have first place and now I am in USA. I hope I have first place. Okay. And I'm so impressed just by his, his dignity, his kindness to everybody. El Gazzar, this name, my family name in Arabic. In English, Butcher. Butcher, El Gazzar. Biamba Javulambayar, we call him Biamba. He grew up in Mongolia. 
He spent most of his teenage years as a pro sumo wrestler in Japan. He has won four World Sumo Champion titles. He's also competed here at the US Sumo Open for eight years in a row. He's won the gold medal every single year. He's not anybody to take lightly. He's probably one of the greatest athletes in American sumo. There's no doubt that everybody here uh, is looking to beat Biamba. His cumulative record at the US Sumo Open is 76 wins and two losses. I've been competing in a lot of tournaments, you know? So before the match, I just think about like, how tough was the training? I'm completely perfect right now, so I can win. He is by far the strongest, most powerful sumo wrestler in the international stage right now, and he's been like that for years. People can't even fathom how good he is. My name is Roy Sims. I'm from Hollister, California. Got into sumo about a year ago. This is actually my one year anniversary. He happened to be in the same pool with four time world champion Biamba. And he almost beat Biamba. Um, Biamba did win, but Roy really gave him a run for his money. His big might be here with power, but uh, he doesn't know about sumo. My hope is that I win the heavyweight and become the first American to win sumo on its home turf. Go ahead, step on. We're doing the weigh-ins today and tomorrow. We're going to round it to 170. Who's next here? Hopefully, we expect everyone will weigh in in their weight class. Whoa, 461, so he's skinny. We're doing the weigh-ins today and tomorrow. Hopefully, we expect everyone will weigh in in their weight class. You don't want someone to be five pounds over and they can't cut it, and they're going to go in the heavier weight class, you know? 184, according to this, you're good to go. In international sumo, there's three weight classes, and so you're going to find even smaller guys competing in a sport where we typically think of someone who's four or 500 pounds. Kilograms, kilograms. You need to lose one run. Well, you so, so he didn't make weight, so he still has all the rest of this afternoon and tomorrow to make 85. Once I got more and more into it, I discovered that there were a lot of lighter sumo wrestlers as well. Uh, there are guys who compete in the top division who barely tip 200 pounds. Uh, and they're going up against guys who are about 440, 450, thereabouts. So it really, it opened it up to me. So we're going to round it to 170. Okay. okay. Who's next here? Hey, Rummy, you ready? Weigh it. Right it's a moment of truth, our biggest competitor. This is going to be pounds, not kilos. Whoa. 461, so he's skinny. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then you're going to spin slowly this way? No, the other way? This way? Uh, when I tell people that I'm entering into the, the US Open, that I'm doing sumo, you know, they're just like, what? You're a sumo wrestler, but you're so skinny. And uh, then I have to explain to them about uh, the technique and how you know not everybody in sumo is a certain body type. That kind of pulled me into it as well, just knowing that there were multiple body types that could be successful in sumo. There you go. The uh, US Open is coming up quick, and uh, I'm, I'm feeling good for it. I want you to launch it. Get on your toes with this one. I'm doing a lot of power cleans, a lot of uh, full pulls, squats, uh, that sort of thing to prepare for. Roy, as a little boy, was always looking to compete. How many push-ups can you do, Mom? I can do more. It was always a competition. I do football, I do wrestling, and I do track. And I did that pretty much all four years. I went to a junior college, and I got All-American. I decided that uh, I'm, I'm going to stop football, start coaching my daughter's uh, teams, and, 
and uh, was enjoying it, but uh, I had that urge to, to compete again and, and decided to go forward with sumo. I literally, you know, entered in advance. We knew he was coming, never had heard of the guy. So about two weeks after I sent the email to Andrew, I walk into my, my brother's home and uh, I find him on the bed and, uh, and I could tell right away that he had passed away. He was the type of person that always was putting himself in a position to give back to people. What, what is sport when you just lost your brother? And I can hear my own brother saying, you know, go out there and, and do something. When Roy said, Mom, I'm still doing my tournament, it's important to me, and I have to carry this out. So I told my daughter-in-law, let's go together. So we drove her and the kids down there, and um, we took our trip, and it was a beautiful trip. We were so pleasantly surprised to see how well Roy did in, in Long Beach, coming in third, first time he'd ever done it. Roy brought so much joy to our family at a time when we were all grieving so terribly. This is the way I show my affection. This is the way I show my love is, is in sport. And so I dedicate the sport to my brother. This is my gym. I'm training here for USA Open. I just uh, walk for 15 minutes. <sighs> Big guys don't like walk, but I like win. So I'm training hard. <laughs> uh, Rami is my friend. I'm helping him in his training. If he wins in this competition, he, he makes uh, a big surprise for Egyptian people. really wants to learn uh, English as soon as possible. They have a fantastic program here. Oh, who did the homework? How many did you do it, Rami? One day he told me, teacher, I don't think I'm going to do this. I don't understand anything. Then little by little, it's amazing the way he is. The uh, same street, so we like to walk to school. Rami, tell me, what is the story about? Story about uh, some friend uh, go to school together. I feel so proud to have a students like him. He's uh, very humble. Say it again. USA is a very good country and very good people, and you feel comfortable. Be you feel in your home. Yeah, I feel it. For the last three years, I've been a IT coordinator at the County Office of Education as the Director of Technology. Pretty much all day, something is either broken or about to break or needs to be updated. In tech, it never ends. So you ended up getting the laptop situated? Hopefully, um, Southside is supposed to be up and running by end of day. We're a small knit community that supports the people that are in our community, and there is an extreme excitement about him and proud. I don't live in Hollister, it's a small community, so you, you might run into the mayor, you might run into the police chief, uh, you might run into all types of city officials, county officials. The, this is the first time I, I meet a Suma wrestler. <laughs> uh, He's a great role model, and I, I just have nothing but respect for him. And I hope he does well. I'm not, I don't hope, I know he's going to do well. Yamba has never lost at the U.S. Open. He's an amazing athlete. When I'm face to face, that's it. I hope I can beat him this time. Doors open in less than two hours. We've got a lot of work to do still, and then uh, the, the matches start in less than three hours. This is 
Feelings are starting to come about. Everybody's getting prepared by taping up or putting their washes on, whatever they do, do their, do their rituals. For me, it's always an emotional time. I, I range from super elated feelings to on the brink of crying. So my, my goal is to calm myself down. I talk to my father and some friends now by internet, and they told me, be man, be hero. You can do it. I will do it. Competition is going to be awesome. I mean, the competition level is going to be spectacular. So in terms of the, the matches and in terms of the fans, I think everyone's going to go out pretty happy. But we're really excited. There's almost 20 of us here supporting Roy. Mom, dad, uncle, friends, cousins, his kids. We've got his kids. It's uh, really exciting. Just hoping that he has fun, doesn't get hurt, and takes the goal. The three ways to win in sumo are the other person touches any part of their body besides the bottom of their feet to the mat. You throw them out of the ring. Any part of their body touches any part outside of the ring, they lose. And the third part is you can pick that person up and walk them out of the ring. It's a 15-foot diameter circle. It's a very small space. Two people are moving very quickly. While it's easy in concept to understand the rules for a viewer, the actual subtleties of how to win are complex. Because a slight change in your movement can determine the match. Time for the big guys, folks. Piyamba, Daba, Rami, Roy were last year's medalists. Bianca was gold, Dava silver, Roy bronze. And we have a newcomer to the tournament, Rami. Let's see who gets the medals this time. Somebody!
gentlemen, for the gold medal in the men's heavyweight division. division for the ninth year in a row, an unprecedented feat against the heaviest opponent, Robbie. Before matches, I just stay and focus. Out of tragedy, oftentimes comes as an opportunity to do something that is outside of yourself. There's no doubt that it roots this sport in a very strong way. He's always been my idol. I'm his little sister, and I've always been so proud of him and just impressed by the person that he is. Thank you. We're at a point in this country where there's probably six or seven hotbeds of sumo all throughout the country and more and more people are joining. They're coming out of college football and they're not going into NFL. Their next step could be possibly be sumo. I think we're gonna start to see a lot more guys, a lot of great athletes that decide, hey, you know what, I'm not ready to stop competing. I'm gonna trade in my cleats for a Mawashi and get in that circle and see what I can do.